we're actually about to bring on Caleb. And this guy, dude, he has such a fiery drive, a tenacity, and just great enthusiasm, encouragement. This The energy is, is so powerful, and it's like uplifting, right? And if you want to be fueled to go after your goals, your dreams, your purpose, your ambitions, you have to have that great energy. Otherwise, life is going to come along and knock you off the track. And if you don't have that great energy to keep getting yourself back up and be be in charge of your state, to, to feel and experience yourself as a victor, like not a victim, then it's going to crush you. And it's, it's going to keep you down longer than you need to be. So Caleb's going to be diving into that in just a sec. Before that, though, I just want to say thank you so much for being here, for choosing to be your greatest possible self. I see you. I know that these are, are just interesting times. These are, these are wondrous times with lots of emotions, lots of amplified things coming to the surface. So thank you for being here. Thank you for choosing to invest in your time, your energy, and, and even your money into the sources of inspiration, of encouragement, of empowerment, of coaching to help you become your greatest possible self. I see you. Keep showing up. Next up is our iTunes review of the week. And this week it's by Melissa B. West, who says, good stuff. Chris's energy is infectious and off the charts. Absolutely. That's the name of the game. It's about that energy. It's about that state. It's about that mindset. Let's get it. Melissa, thank you so much for that review. If you want a chance to get shouted out on a future 12-hour marathon all day long as the review of the week, go to beergps.com forward slash iTunes and search greatest possible self on iTunes store. You could get to it both ways like that. Um, let us know what you love, what you want to see more of, how we can improve the show for you. Uh, not only does it help us grow and, and build better content for you and, and uh, better marathons in the future for the guests that you want, but also you get to get shouted out and celebrated as a massive contribution to our growth. So thank you so much for that. I'm going to introduce Caleb in just a sec. Before that, grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, be ready to take notes. This is going to be the fire you have been waiting for all day long today. It is hump day on today, Wednesday. Uh, what is it, April 1st? April Fool's Day, too. I haven't even, I have not mentioned that with anyone. It's interesting. It hasn't come up yet, but it uh, just came top of mind. May have zero relevance for the rest of the day. We'll see. <laughs> but uh, Caleb Valley is about to come on and rock your world. So stick around all the way through to the end because one idea has the power to change your life. Caleb, Caleb Valley, the, um, or Valle, we'll find out which one he, he loves, <laughs> the 26-year-old entrepreneur, speaker, speaker, and mentor. He is the son of an immigrant, a happy husband, and the proud father of two. He entered the world of sales and business at the age of 10 and has since held many jobs, owning in on the skills that would take him to where he is today. He is filled to the brim with passion, excitement, and ambition. And that is just the tip of the iceberg with this epic human being. Caleb, are you ready to bring the freaking heat, my man? <laughs> I'm ready to get it. I love your energy, man. It's so fantastic. <laughs> I'm just glad to be here, honestly. I mean, yes. we've been talking about this for a little bit. Yes. We've had a couple phone calls. I just I just love who you are, what you're Thank doing, you. man. So this is this is an honor for me to be here. Thank you, man. It's an honor for me. I love spotlighting the greatness of people who are on here. You're, you're an amazing human being and I want our audience to Thanks, know man. about you. We start off with this question. When life hands you lemons, brother, pivot. What does that mean for you? I, I love lemons, by the way. <laughs> uh, I have a lot of Latino family, so we put lemon juice in kind of everything. Um, a lot of food. Oh, so good. Um, when life hands you lemons, pivot. Yeah. It, I, I think that's just it's the idea that, I mean, everyone obviously has heard so much about when life gives you lemons, you know, make lemonade, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's the idea that lemons are opportunities in that scenario. Mm -hmm. And if you have an opportunity presented to you and it's a good one, it's a ripe lemon, why are you still going down the other road? Or if you mm -hmm. are going down a different road, pivot, turn, yeah. take advantage of those moments and, and see what it may have in store for you because it could be fantastic. Heck yeah, bro. I love it. I love it. Amen. So this is great. And when life hands me lemons, um, you know, I, I just make the most out of it, you know, and, and just like really bring all the resources, all the connections, all the people, you know, what, what could I do? What could be with this, with this, in, with these ingredients, right? What's the potential recipe? What's the potential transformation, man? And uh, you're bringing success, you're bringing empowerment, you're bringing uh, encouragement and to people who are on that journey of making the most out of their ingredients, out of the most, out of, out of their their journey, who they are. Tell us a little bit more about the work that you're doing today and, and really what you stand for, man. No, this is awesome. This is exactly why I want to be here. I love outlets like this where I can get to share my story a little bit. Um, so like you kind of said in the introduction, uh, my, my, my dad, he's an immigrant. So he moved here from Peru when he was a little wow. 
older than eight or nine. He's had some crazy experiences. Didn't learn English until he was 15, 16, though, wow. um, which showed it, which shows kind of how secluded he was and his family was from like the rest of the population. Uh, he lived in Idaho. So lots of hillbillies, you know, <laughs> lots of rednecks. Um, I'm sure he fit right in. <laughs> I know. You're like, wow, this is fantastic. <laughs> Um, and so he, he did a lot of growing. Um, it was, it was very different for him growing up. Mm -hmm. Um, in fact, his dad, so my grandfather would always tell him he, he didn't really have a lot of ambition. He told my dad, you know, it's fine if you work at McDonald's and you stay working at McDonald's forever, mm -hmm. just find a job and stay there. Don't, there wasn't really a hardcore push for school. Um, so my dad did kind of what everyone else does that he got a business degree in, in college and then left college and was like, wow, this actually doesn't really help me in mm -hmm. life. Um, he, he's, he went into the military, he came back from the military and did police work. Um, then he married my mom. And for the longest time growing up for me, I, I'm the first born in my family. Wow. Um, growing up was difficult because my dad was still trying to find his footing. You know, my dad and my mom, actually, they were, they were working out a lot of different things. They didn't know exactly what they were going to do. My mom didn't go to college. She was staying at home with us. Um, and, and I have three other siblings. Um, and I mean, life was just different for us. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like, especially for the kids I was surrounded by seeing yep. them get all the things that they, they wanted, they desired from their family. Um, whereas it, I mean, I shared the same bed, uh, with my brothers and sisters when I was, uh, until I was 12. I mean, like when we lived in Florida, we, we would moved all over the place, but we shared a single bed. Um, and it's, it, I don't think that we were horribly poor, you know, by no means. Um, but it was, it was just a different life. And I remember when I was 10 years old, um, I, I talked with my dad. I was like, Hey, I want to get those new Pokemon cards. I want to get those new, <laughs> yes. those new things, the yes. cool scooters. Um, what can I do? And my dad was like, well, I'm not just going to hand you the money. It's so important that you learn what I didn't get to learn from my mm. dad. Um, and so, and this wasn't at a time where I think he was highly successful, you know, in anything, but my dad was so for trying to push his children into a direction where he wasn't at when he was at the same age. So, um, he helped me just kind of instill, it's like, oh my gosh, I can work, I can do things. Um, so I, I remember there was a guy in our block, he had 10,000 glow sticks in his garage and I was like, dad let's go buy those glow sticks. And he's like, that's a great <laughs> idea. So we go over to this guy's house and I basically borrowed $300 from my dad to buy all the glow sticks. And wow. now we moved all the glow sticks. We have them in our garage. And I'm like, what the heck just happened? And my dad's helping me with math. And we're like, okay, <laughs> I bought 10,000 with $300. That's like three cents a glow stick. If I make 25 cents on glow stick, like that's, that's fantastic. Yeah. So every day um, for about a year and a half, almost two years, I went door to door selling since I was 10. Wow. Um, selling glow sticks and that instilled in me just this I can't even explain it when I try to explain my ambition to people mm. I try to make it visual because I feel like I'm not even joking I feel like inside me yeah. there is like this this flame I feel it it's a mm. flame and it burns and yeah. it's, it when I get into this moment like when I'm talking to you about it, I get heated and yep. I I just I feel like I'm invincible and I feel like I can do so much good. And so, I mean, in, I've been feeling this since I was 10, man. Like, right. And I just, I love this feeling. Um, and ever since then, I've, I've held different business. I've, I've started four different businesses up. I have one currently called Success Quest. Um, I'm also helping a business called the Arise Society here in Utah. It's a local business that helps um, college students with mental illnesses help mm -hmm. kind of adapt to college life and life in general. Um, because it's hard to become independent nowadays. Um, they, they're like, oh, you know, I just got $60,000 in debt. What do I do? I don't know how to organize myself. I, ne I was never taught about taxes and things like this. So yeah. I'm a mentor for students and I help them in, in, in that area. And so I, I kind of juggle a lot. Um, I want to start up a third business because I had this fantastic idea. Um, and I have a friend who um, we've been talking about it for a little bit. Um, so yeah, my life is super busy. I've got a kid. My wife's pregnant actually recently. Wow. Um, Dude. It's it's just phenomenal, man. I and I just love my life. And I think what I want to do more than anything, and I know I've been talking for a long time, it's but great. the one it's thing great. I want to do more than anything is instill some of that fire that I have inside of me. I want people to recognize what it's like to feel that, mm. how to take full advantage of that. I, mm. I I don't think I have all the answers, but I I know I'm a pretty good guide. I, I've I've been down the road, 
uh, even though I'm young. <laughs> Dude, I love it. I love it. And, and I love the energy, the synergy that we have because there's so much aliveness. There's so much good energy that you have, man. It's just, it's like really pure, kind, generous, but also empowering and like get stuff done, which is, is yes, like, the, I think such a really special combination. And for me, it's like my mission has been for the last couple of years since I learned how to articulate it, it's to awaken the power within each person I meet or so they, they remember, right? It's not even like I'm doing anything. I'm just saying, hey, look at this mirror. Do you see yourself? Do you see this source? Do you see this power? Do you see how God is like working through you to so that you can be your best self, right? Yeah. Like activate that. You have the choice. You have the power. And when you're talking about fire, like I have so much fire symbology in my life and like reawakening that fire, like really uh, being the catalyst that takes their spark that might be dim, that might be, you know, not not fully a, an inferno or whatever it might be, you know, yep. a blazing fire. You really pour on the gasoline so that they can take their power exactly. back and live an amazing life, man. I think that's the thing that gets me the most. I, I truly don't believe that anyone's fire ever like gets put out. No, I feel like it, it can get really small, but in the end, people are hiding it away or people yeah. are pushing it to the back yeah. and they're postponing it for some reason. Everyone has this little ambition inside of them. Yeah. And for whatever reason, and maybe it's just because they don't believe in themselves, there's yeah. some sort of fear oh, yeah. there. Um, but what I want to do is help people, like you said, like get the gasoline out, get the fuel. Mm. And I feel like I believe truly that a lot of that fuel comes from just understanding what pure positivity means for you and yeah. finding out what passion means for you. And then once you have those two foundations in your life, yeah. you're just going to, you're going to kill it. You're going to kill it. Um, and, and, and the fear will dissipate. And over time you'll be like, oh my gosh, I love being in this this realm. It used to be uncomfortable for me. And I mean, it still kind of is, but I, I feel like adrenaline and it's yep. beautiful. I, I can't even explain it. I love it. I want to, I want to go back in your journey a little bit and talk about being a teacher, being a guide. Like when, when did you say that that was like an important part of who you are understanding yourself enough to say, this is more of the energy and the work it, that I want to be doing? Like, how did that unfold for you, man? So, um, so after I started doing, I mean, the glow stick stuff, I obviously loved sales. And I think I was realizing that I liked sales even more than business when I was 10. Now it's a little bit opposite. I mean, it's kind of people down. I realized the importance of sales, but business yes. is so much more than that, you yes. know? So, um, I was like, man, I got to keep this up. So when I stopped, I, I remember I got to a point I had made like $1,200. It was fantastic. And I sold the rest of the glow sticks for $300, right. paid my dad back. And it's like, Hey, what's up? This wow. is really cool. Wow. Um, and I, I started keeping sales jobs after that. So I worked mm -hmm. with my dad started actually not even too long after my glow stick thing. He started a business in concrete um, lifting. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a very interesting business. But he bought it for I think it was like 40 something thousand dollars on the spot too. Mm -hmm. And um, he grew it into a business worth almost half a million dollars wow. um, over seven years. And that was just like I was like, my dad's so awesome. <laughs> um, and so I started doing sales for him because I was a kid and I was like, I understood that I was cute. And I was like, yeah. man, people open the door and stay open, you know, because yep. I'm a cute kid. Yep. Um, but then I learned that there were skills I had to develop. Um, so I started doing tons of different jobs. Um, either on the phone, in, inbound, outbound, in person, so pest control, all that stuff, direct TV, whatever it is. Yep. Um, I found value in all those um, positions. So I did hold a lot of different jobs. And in each job, um, I noticed a trend um, when I was there, either because of my energy or because of my success, which I did see a lot of success. Um, I was quickly put into positions of either team leads Mm -hmm. or where I was managing people and looking over a team and helping them with their success. Yeah. Um, and I thought it was kind of interesting. I was like, wow, I'm 15, 16 years old, and I'm in charge mm -hmm. for once. And I, I was like, this is, I liked it because I, I, I was helping someone else do something I thought was actually pretty natural uh, and mm -hmm. pretty easy. Um, and, and my team, they weren't necessarily younger. I mean, these are people who range from, you know, my age to 45. And I was yep. like, this is great. I love this. Um, and I kind of just toyed with that for a long time. I kept going into different jobs. I kept getting promoted. And I was like, wow, this is a common theme. I, I think this is awesome. Um, and I, I, when I, I turned 21, I had held so many sales jobs. And I had just gotten back from a pest control job. And I just realized I had enough. I was so fed up with selling things that had no real value mm. um, to people. And 
I was just so upset because I remember I came back from pest control and I was like, you know, the way you made money was when you you found that 80 year old who lived on the corner of the street and you got talking with her and she liked you enough. She bought from you. But yep. did she need the pest control? <laughs> did she need the thing you were selling? No, no, she didn't. You know, right. like it was just because you're trying to make a lot of money. And that's kind of the the mentality in those type of groups and teams. Yeah. Um, everyone's just kind of like, yeah, we're going to get tons of money. Then we'll go on cruises and stuff. But then you don't realize like the effect you're having on other people and you're not really helping anyone, you know? And so I got, I got super fed up with it. Um, and, and I kind of made a promise to myself that from that point forward, um, I was only going to sell things that made an impact on people. Um, and that kind of led me one thing to another, to this point I am today on success quest I've had for um over a year now and we we have a podcast and it's awesome we get to talk with people from all around the world um and, and successful people at that and it's just amazing to me um how much collectively we have learned that can truly impact people um and i think that's my dad told me from when i was young um that my purpose he would sit me down and i was like eight or nine when he first i remember this the farthest back he'd be like caleb your your purpose should be to help people um and that's just stuck with me and so now i don't sell anything that doesn't have some sort of impact on people yeah dude i love it i love your journey of the contrast it's the contrast and i think that's what we get our our direction from it's like noticing where we spent a lot of time and energy and feeling like man that wasn't as fulfilling as i thought it would be you know talking about the money talking about the cruises vacations things like that like at the end of the day is that really what is is motivating us and i think for especially this generation that is is growing up now going into teenage and 20s um it's like we want to be a part of something that impacts the world we're we're done with the you know 80s and 90s um, era of like just accumulation and like trying yeah. to keep up with society and status and things like that. And it's like, no, we want freedom. We want meaning. We want like the ability yes. to live life on our terms as well as to develop the gifts within ourselves so that we can go out there and serve people like you were talking about, man. And I think the the biggest way you can make an impact on people, especially in my age group, right? Like, and this is these are the people I try to focus on, mm -hmm. are, are people between the ages, you know, twenty one and thirty two, because yep. um, these are people who are in the heat of mm -hmm. trying to define success for themselves. You know, they're learning what they're going to be doing for the rest of their lives. They're trying to find their footing. They're freaking out because. Um, people are telling them left and right that they need to get all these different programs or they need to have an e-commerce business or sell things on eBay or they get scared and they're like, I'm just going to stay here at my office for the next 20 years. And that's yep. what I'm going to do. And I, I think people need to reconsider um, what success is. And then you sit down and take those moments like 20, 30 minutes. It doesn't take a long time to find out what your, your drive is, what your why is. Like Dean Graziosi always says, you know, he has that activity where um, it's the seven layers deep yeah. activity. You're asking yourself why until you understand, you know, at your core what you are. And from there, you can make, you'll find what your passion is, mm -hmm. you know, and you'll find what makes you happy. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I feel like people are just not giving that enough of a chance. Um, so I want to help people in, in my age range yep. um, have that second chance or hopefully that first chance and just get it right off the bat. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm curious asking the questions i think that's such a big part of of getting that clarity is being willing to ask ourselves the questions and and be curious and do the work and ask why seven times and go as deep as we possibly can to get to what's truly important to us how how has having someone a mentor a coach someone outside of you uh, or being that person for others how has that impacted that process of self discovery self awareness and discovering what your ambition is and what your drive is this this is the best question, man. Like, uh, because there is huge value in having someone to guide you. Um, and and in my life, I I've had quite a few different types of mentors. Obviously, mm -hmm. I mean, you can include your parents, you can include um, teachers, even friends, peers. Um, I, I love going back to my mom and my dad. Super cliche, right? But just because it's cliche doesn't mean it's doesn't have value. Um, which <laughs> and um. My parents were that for me um, growing up because I was a crazy kid, man. Like, I was just, <laughs> and I mean, I, I, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I, I love to be high energy. Yes. I love like the enthusiasm. I love having fun and joking around. Um, 
and I was just all over the place. I, I <laughs> ADHD. Yeah, I, I'm for sure. I'm still like that. And I'm like, man, maybe when I was a kid, I should have been on, you know, I did, <laughs> well, seriously, I don't know. Anyways, but um, always throughout my whole entire life, I've appreciated my parents. Yeah. Um, and, and without them, it would have just been so much more difficult. If my dad yeah. wouldn't have told me at 10 to make those strides in business and doing something on my own, I, I, I probably would have turned out fine, but I don't think I would have understood this this flame in me. Mm-hmm. And I think it would have held me back. Yeah. Um, I definitely wouldn't have made risks that yeah. wouldn't have made sense. I, now I make risks all the I, I, I take risks all the time yeah. um, because it's, it's powerful and, and, and it's not a risk. There's no, you don't have to fear risk. Mm-hmm. If you have knowledge, you know, the more knowledge you have, the, the less it becomes a real risk. Mm. Um, you know, when people talk about like the stock market, for example, this is such a cool thing. I love talking about business and stuff like this, by the way. Um, but when it comes to something like the stock market and you're brand new, yeah, it's going to be risky. Yep. Why? Because you don't understand how to find something that has value and how, what's going to have value in 20 years from now or five years from now or in a week. Mm. Um, so it's, you just have to spend a lot of time learning. Um, that's kind of my favorite thing to do. Yes. Yes. It's, it's so, so powerful just to be willing to like master something. And I think that's what a lot of people have a difficulty with is they're like, well, I don't know what to master, right? I don't know what's, what's important. I don't know where to start. And I like really having that ambition, the dream, the destination of like, where do we want to go? What kind of a life do we want to live? And it doesn't have to be perfect, but just like paint a picture of like, what's in, what's inspiring now? What feels inspiring now? I know, for me like seven years ago eight years ago when i started my entrepreneurial journey i was like well i want a big house i want cars i want to have yeah. multiple girlfriends i want to be a player <laughs> right like all these things i, I was, it was all superficial but yep. it got me started right and that's that was the important thing is that i was willing to like paint that picture and then as i go along the journey then it's refinement then it's like really like feeling in hey what's what's true to my to me i i've i've been trying to do what i think is a, a is a Uh, expected of me, but it's not fulfilling. And it's not like really landing in my soul. And I don't feel like I'm making the progress that I want to be making. What is missing? What, where am I off track? And it's in that opportunity where we get curious, where we're like, maybe I don't know, maybe I don't have all the answers and that's okay, but let's figure it out. Let's, let's do some more research. Let's, let's check in with ourselves, you know? Yep. I totally agree. And it's funny because you bring up the whole superficial thing. It just makes me think I've talked to by now. You're the, probably the same way. How many people have you actually talked to, you know, and interviewed and, and people who have had so much success as being a mentor? Yeah. And how many of those people have reaffirmed to you mm. how those superficial things do not make yep. you happy? Yep. How many people, right? It yep. blows my mind. I'm talking mm. to someone from like Canada, from South Italy, and they're all telling me the same thing. You know, people who are actors, you know, people who are making millions of dollars, Mm. they're like, yeah, my friends, they're not happy. I wasn't happy for a long time. I made it, but I had to find something else. And I'm like, that is so intriguing how across the board, it's the same. Um, And you've got to find that why it's so important. And and maybe it's a little bit backwards for them, but for you, it shouldn't be right. Mm. So if, if you're listening to this, if you're watching this, I actually can't see how many people are, are watching this, obviously, but it's important for you to have a guide in your life to be able to say, okay, number one, your why. Number two, you know, your, your passion. And then we find these things together. And then we, we decide what fears are holding you back. What traumas mm. from your, your childhood or from your youth are, said, are, are limiting you right now? Mm. Um, what type of mindsets are restricting you? And then you start breaking these barriers one by one. And you're just like, oh my gosh, the light gets brighter because you're getting closer to the outside. And yes. once you're out there, the world's yours. You know, it's it's powerful. It's so empowering. Dude, I love it. Um, something that came up as you were talking earlier is the Growth Mindset by Carol Dweck. Have you have you heard of that book? It's, it's I have. I have yeah. not yet read it. Dude, it is it's so powerful, and I think it's something that's really relevant, especially to uh, millennials and younger people, because the the premise is parents typically celebrate kids when they do well, right? When they get, when they get the A, when they get good grades. And so what that reinforces is 
only when I achieve am I worthy and am I, you know, validated and valued. And if I am not successful, then I'm a failure and I, I shouldn't step into that realm of, of failing. And you were talking about how your dad like really just stoked your fire and empowered you and, and, and encouraged you to take those risks, right? Of course, to be as educated as possible with it. But at a certain point, you just have to say, well, whatever happens, happens. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to survive. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get through it. I know that I'm enough. And I think a lot of um, young people, especially find it difficult to, to really embody that, to live that attitude and to um, know that their flame within isn't some frail thing and their value within isn't some frail thing that can just be extinguished and, you know, smashed and destroyed when they don't get the result that they want. But it's like this, this unconscious conversation that's going on in so many people's minds that like they're, they're going to get defeated and then they're, they're going to be worthless. They're going to be, you know, valueless. Nobody's going to want to have them around. I think it's, it's stopping a lot of people, man. And I think that makes what it separates us from people like that. And I think what I've found in my life to be true, um, what fuels ambition mm. is pure positivity. Mm. Um, and I have to say pure in front of positivity all the time because I ask people, do you think that you can be overly positive? Yeah, you could probably be overly positive. Right, right. <laughs> I think there was someone, I think if you Google it, the first thing it's going to tell you is like, oh well, yeah, people have said that all the time. If you become overly positive, um, then it just looks like you're ignoring the negative delusional, yeah. right? Exactly. You, yeah. you, so, you suddenly become ignorance of right. what's actually happening in front yep. of you. But pure positivity is being able to be hopeful, be positive hmm. while acknowledging that bad things are happening. Hmm. Um, and, and the reason that's so powerful is because when you get knocked down, it's not about ignoring the fact that you got knocked down. It's about looking at that and loving it. Yeah. And looking at yeah. that that fall and that failure as a stepping stone mm. rather than, you know, a, a regular stone, I guess. That's right. knocked me over. Um, <laughs> I, I truly believe that pure positivity, if you can understand what that means, and that's mm. kind of what I want to help people also understand, I, I truly believe that it fuels it fuels ambition, but it also fuels miracles. And I think you need a little bit of both yes. in, order, in order to be successful uh, in life. It's like trusting, trusting the universe, God, source, creator, whatever, to, to like do its share of, of the work, so to speak, because we're showing up and we're taking massive action. We're trusting, yep. we're having faith, we're, you know, and we're putting great energy into the work that we're doing, man. Um, can you give us an example of either in your own life or with a client, um, pure positivity and like the difference that that made um, when maybe you or someone else wasn't having that, that acknowledging of the, the difficult things, the things that were going wrong or bad and like resisting that and instead like transforming that into, hey, I acknowledge it, I see it but i'm going to still keep moving forward i'm going to still keep going for it yeah no this is this is awesome this kind of get, dives into me a little bit more so you guys are getting to know me on a personal level right um so when i was um 16 and i, I live in utah so when you turn 16 you can finally get your driver's license it's the best feeling ever man <laughs> um and it's like man i got my driver's license my dad had just bought me a new chevy truck not new it was like 1997 it was <laughs> Right. Um, but it was new for me, right? I was yep. so excited, dude. I was so stoked. <laughs> um, and it was a hot summer day. I mean, there was no classes. I had plans to go with friends and I was going to enjoy myself. So I remember it was like 1 PM. I just finished lunch. I grabbed my keys, I grabbed my wallet and I ran out the door and I got down the, the, the couple stairs and I just passed out. I, I literally fell to the ground. Um, and I just was coming to, and I was like, oh, all I could hear was my heart pounding wow. um and i was so confused and my dad rushed out he picked me up and brought me inside and put me on the couch and he's trying to talk to me and i'm just like what is happening like Dang. it was like freaking drums you like huge drums banging in my ears and i was like my heart is killing me right now this is the worst feeling um my dad decides to take me to the hospital um and while i was there they obviously checked my vitals my heart rate was at 160 beats per minute or damn something. and i was like whoa I, I'm not running, you know, like I'm just chilling. Um, and so they, they rushed me to the emergency room because um, it was rising. My heart rate was continually rising. By the time I was in the um, emergency room, my heart rate was 220 beats a minute. What? Um, eventually, I, it was not even that long until it got to 280. 
And when that happens, um, your your blood starts to pool in your chest. Wow. So your heartbeat isn't isn't going like this 300 times a minute. You know, it's it's going just really fast. Yeah. You know, it's freaking out. It's just spasming. Right. Right. Um, and so the blood's pooling. And because my arms and legs weren't getting blood, they started to curl up toward me, you know, um, and it was the mo- most crazy thing. I couldn't I had zero control over my body and they were strapping me down. And I just remember that entire time I was thinking, is this it? You know, like moments like that, that hit you hard. I was 16. And you just, what, what else am I supposed to do? Am I just gone at this point? Um, And it was hard, harder for me to see my mom and my dad who couldn't look at me, you know, tears in their eyes. They're freaking out. Um, eventually, um, my heart rate, it it maxed out at 306 beats a minute. Um, doctor came in and they helped me perform some crazy techniques or whatever to slow my heart down. But I remember in, before the doctor came and I just was looking at this heart monitor in my parents' faces and I'm just asking myself, what choices do I have right now? And immediately I was just I don't, it was a weird feeling. And I mean, I, I believe in God. I, I believe in this higher power. Mm. And in that moment, it, I didn't hear anything, but I felt like, just, just be okay. Just believe that you're going to be okay. And I was like, you know what, that, that for some reason gave me so much hope, mm. so much peace. Um, and I just said, whatever happens, happens, you know, <laughs> like, let's go. Um, Doctor came in, we called my heart, my body was kind of like paralyzed, my body couldn't move because blood was just barely getting back to everything. Mm. Um, It was like 40 minutes before I could start moving again. Um, And then I sat there, I was like, I'm okay. You know, I'm good. In that moment, in the heat of hardship and Mm. trial and, and tribulation, you just have to be okay. You can't let the negativity affect you, because it'll affect you hard. Yeah. You know, and I'm a guy who who deals with anxiety. You know, I feel like a lot of people do nowadays. We kind of are more aware about mental illness in general. Um, but pure positivity is going to fuel miracles. And that moment is going to fuel your ambition. Yeah. And you're going to sit there and be like, look at me. I survived, you know. And this is just on a different scale. I mean, people have, have survived much worse. Mm. Um and people listening right now have probably had have a story. They're like raising their hands right now. They're like, can I share mine? You know, and it's, it's because we're all humans. We all deal with, with different pains and different struggles. Um, it's your choice mm. to let that either fuel you and fuel your drive forever or let it halt you right then and there. And you're just going to be you're going to be miserable. Um, and it's such a simple choice. Honestly, uh, it's a hard one. But it's a simple one. Do not overcomplicate it. Dude, I um, love, I love that. Like, you have such a powerful story, and um, you know that near death experience, where you really start to get perspective on on your life, and you know, like, is this it? Like, what what have I accomplished and created so far? Like, like what have I experienced so far? Like, have I lived the fullest life that I can possibly live? Those like thoughts are going through our mind in those moments, and um, I just. I appreciate how you've you've gotten from that those moments to focus on I'm going to be okay. I'm going to get through this. Like I trust. I have faith. I have faith in a higher plan that hey, you know, if it's my time so to speak, then it's my time. Like all great, you know. <laughs> if 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 I'm meant to be here, which I think oftentimes there's a knowingness that no, there's there's more work for me here. There's more there's more blessings for me to give. There's more of my purpose to live and people to impact and legacy to leave. Like I know I'm meant for more. Like this is not it. This is not the end. Uh, if it is, okay. But I'm 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 certain. I'm certain. <laughs> exactly. God, I know you got more planned for me. Um, so I think it's it's like both of those, right? It's like being so positive, so ambitious, saying like, hey, I'm I'm going for it. While still saying, hey, you know, given the cir- the circumstances where I'm at right now, like some people, it, it might be the end for them. And so I'm going to acknowledge yeah. that. I'm going to say like the beating 306 freaking beats per minute, like that's intense. <laughs> that's that's so close to like not having a life anymore. And so I, yeah. I recognize that. I acknowledge that. 
and I'm going to keep moving forward. I'm going to keep persevering. I'm going to keep my faith so that the miracle is able to, to occur because we created that space for it instead of worry and anxiety and, and just staying on, oh my gosh, 306, like, what do I do? I'm so afraid. I'm so afraid. What if I die? What if I die? What if? And, and then we entertain that conversation downward spiral until, you know, it's no more, until, until someone is no more. And so we, we really yeah. have to be conscious of that, man. I love how, how you shared that and, and really gave us perspective on how we can do that in extreme search situations as well as like our day-to-day life, man. Yeah. No, no, and I think, thank you, by the way, for validating my story. I feel like that's also important for people to do as humans, you know, to sit down and listen to each other because we all are empowering people. And we have stories that maybe we want to keep to ourselves, but that will empower someone else too, you know? We're all in this together. That's that's my biggest thing. We're all a part of this. Let's just figure out life as we go. Uh, there's no reason to hold back and hold secrets, you know? All of it should just be shared as much as we can. Um, but, you know, in the midst of things like right now, obviously, you know, the whole COVID-19, this is this is a hard time for some people because I feel like the it's so easy to be negative about these yep. things. Um, and I'm a high-risk patient, actually, and I, I have severe asthma um which is horrible um but in the in the midst of all of this like what are you what are your choices mm. you know don't don't let it be a million and five choices boil it down to just those two choices of yeah. am i going to be purely positive about this moment mm. or am i going to be real negative about this experience and one of them is going to lead you towards massive action yeah. where and, and we all know mm. what the answer is um, and I love that word, the massive action. It's yeah. just like, yes, yeah. you know, it, it's not necessarily one huge action, no. but it's collective actions, you know, just constantly every day. And that, that collectively is your massive action. Yeah. And it's the fire. It's that fire yeah. being executed through actions. Like just because the fire is burning bright and you're taking massive action doesn't mean that you constantly, you know, let's say have to do a seminar, host a seminar every single day with a thousand people in it. Although that it's possible, it could be like, hey, I'm just going to do the thousand person seminar and like go for it or even the yeah. hundred person <laughs> seminar or whatever, whatever it is, right? Like, and, and just figure it out. But like whatever that milestone is that lights us up, whatever that, that project, that goal, that mission, that dream, and just go for it, man. Yep. And you're going to know too, if it, if you're passionate about something, yeah. when massive action doesn't feel like massive action mm. you know you're gonna yeah. you're gonna sit there and be like oh my gosh like the day's over i'm done with work you know yeah. that's kind of sad <laughs> mm-hmm. when you start having that type of mentality toward it you're you're in it you know that's the holy grail right there you know for you <laughs> yep. take that seize that don't yep. let go of it dude that's your lemon dude <laughs> that's right that's right oh my gosh let's let's make some some beautiful recipes dude uh you you launched your podcast man tell us like what inspired you to launch a podcast it, it was funny um so i have a co-host um his name is jacob he's fantastic man he has his own businesses and actually currently he has a, a web design business that's taking off majorly and i'm so happy yeah, for him heck yeah um dude he's he's phenomenal dude he's so um techy mm-hmm. he loves apple products so i kind of we kind of debate about those all the time uh, <laughs> um him more than me because he knows the specs and stuff better than me <laughs> but um uh, he's he's phenomenal and we were talking we started the business in november of 2018 mm-hmm. and it was like m- end of march that he was kind of like dude podcasts are killing it right now and i was like podcast yeah i guess I hear about people listening to them. I don't listen to any myself. And he was like, dude, you got to start listening, man. Everyone's yeah. doing it. Yeah. So we started getting into it and we're like, oh my gosh, how hard would it be to start your own podcast? Can't be that hard, right? And I mean, it's like, it's that drive, right? It's like, I want to do something, just do it. And mm-hmm. so we just jumped right into it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we got the mic set up. We had, the la- we had all the programs. We were so excited. We did our first episode. Um, all of our downloads came from mom and dad. It was, <laughs> it was fantastic. Um, but, that, but we loved it. You know, yeah. it was so much fun to interview people and to talk about things and to theorize. Um, and so I think we started hitting our strides, um, in July. Yeah. Um, we started, we started getting just tons of applicants every week and our downloads, it was just like this. Yep. And we yep. were like, oh, there it is. You know, like, that's so cool. Um, never thought I'd see a line like that. Right. <laughs> um, and then the whole, the, the fact that people were just, you know, talking to us about it, it was fun to talk about. 
we were going to conventions and things where we just get to like, hey, you know, we have this podcast. You want to get on? Let's talk. You know, yeah. it's like, yeah. yeah. And it's just, I think the reason I love it so much is because of the community and the, the relationship building. Mm. Um, I love talking to people. I yeah. love building relationships because I think that is the key to success. Like it's one of those keys yep. um, is just getting to know people who want and desire the same things you do, you know, like just like you, Chris, like yep. we, we met up and I feel like that's why we vibe so well yep. is because we have these same types of mentality. We want to reach a certain goal, but we want to take as many people as we can with us. Yep. The values, it's values that like really drives us. And like when you have similar values as someone else at like your baseline, right? Because people can step into generosity. They can step into uh, abundance. They can step into high energy. And what is our baseline? You know, like where do we come back to? And it's like in that that baseline that we really create that that harmonic resonance, so to speak, between two people or uh, a mission or a group or a community because we all know like, hey, we're here because of these values. We're here to become our greatest possible self. We're here to create a, a journey of success, to have a, a success quest, right? Like we're here to go on this journey and succeed and thrive. Like, okay, like I, I know yeah. why Kate's here. I know why Chris is here. Of, of course, <laughs> you know? Yep. <laughs> it's like no brainer, man. This is, yeah. this is phenomenal. And I think, okay, so I remember too in your application, right? To be a part of this whole amazing journey um, in and of itself. Um, there was a question about like, what, what do you expect to offer, um, the audience, you know, like what can you commit to, to give the audience? And I, I keep thinking about that as we talk, I'm like, man, people who are listening and people who are, um, actually tuning in and taking time out of their day to try and learn something new and to add on to what they know. Um, I just want to let you know that you aren't alone in this process. Mm -hmm. Millions of people are trying to do what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And Chris and I are people. Who, who want to help guide you in, in, in those scenarios. If you're like, man, I just can't figure out how to organize my thoughts and how to organize my dream and my passion, make it a reality, um, I, I want to be there for you. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we, this is probably something we're going to do at the end. I know we still have like 18 minutes left, but I want to let you guys know that I, I, I'm not someone who's, who wants to just say all these things and then not also help people, you know, actually help people in those scenarios. Um, I want to be there for you guys. Dude, I love it. We we will definitely get into that, man, and how people can connect with you. But I, I really love hearing your value of like connecting with someone who's listening on the other side of this, right? Like, yeah, there's there's a bunch of people who end up downloading and listening to it, and there's one person who we're talking to. One, this is going into one person's headphones, right? Or maybe you have a friend next to you, and you're, you're both listening. What's up? Yeah. <laughs> but, but typically, it's like it's one person. You're watching yeah. this one person. You're you're listening to this, and so I think it's like really addressing that and knowing, hey, there's a human being on the other side of this, and I think that's something. It's really special to keep top of mind and in, in, in your in our hearts when we're creating content. Like w this is going out to the person who we want to support the most, who we want to encourage the most, the person who's who's struggling, the person who's hungry, the person who's open to hearing these words. It's like this is for you. Like we do this for you. We show up on this Wednesday for you. We we are this lighthouse for you to guide you to to help you get to where you want to go and i think it's it's so important that you just shared that man because i think it's it can be lost that intention can be lost um for people when we just get into the motions of hey it's time to create more content it's time to you know show up and do what we normally do and it's like well how are we how are we really connecting how are we right. choosing this moment to be extraordinary to be a, a miracle you know Yep. I totally agree, dude. Also, I wanted to just let you know, my, my kid actually just woke up. So he's in the back right now. So if you guys hear a little bit of, oh, <laughs> wow, daddy, you know, like <laughs> that's him in the background and my wife's over there helping him out with lunch. So I love just it. letting you guys know. Yeah. I family guy it. right here. Right? You well, know? <laughs> the full time, full time father. I, I put that on your, your name bar here is like mm -hmm. one of the aspects of who you are an identity that you are, you're proud of. Tell me, tell me a little bit more about like what, what, when did you say, or what was the cause of you saying, like, I'm going to really step into being a father? Yeah, I think, so this is something I talk about. So I've done a lot of mental health stuff um, in my life. Uh, I, I was a mental health worker. I was a CNA. I was, I was in nursing school. Um, I'm doing the thing right now currently with of, of the Rise Society. Yep. Um, I've had, I have years of experience dealing with mental health, um, including my own. And I have a brother 
who deals with a lot a very large scale mental health issue. He has, um, he has autism. Mm -hmm. He has major depression. He also has multiple sclerosis. It's like the craziest mix I've ever seen in a human being. I'm like, mm -hmm. dude, this is like very unfortunate. Um, but he's just the most incredible guy. Um, but so, I mean, I see a lot of mental health issues mm -hmm. um, in the world. And I can't tell. So this is one of the biggest things that I have a problem with. When I was working um, in Bountiful at this huge lockdown facility for uh, mentally ill teenage delinquents. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll tell you, it's a crazy place because uh, my first week they broke my nose. Like it was it was insane. Like they were making shivs out of like pens. They stabbed yeah. one of my coworkers in the ear. Like this is, this is nuts. This was a crazy place. I have some stories that just would just blow your mind. But um, <laughs> we were so focused on like, how are we going to help these kids? for when they have to go back home, mm. you know? And, and we realized like, man, your parents are a, a, a huge reason as to why you are the way you are today. Wow. Um, not even just because of fetal alcohol syndrome, you know, we're talking about just the fact that their dad is in a gang or constantly yeah. in jail or their mom is cheating on the dad and they can mm. see that or someone's in abu an abusive relationship. Um, so they see that and it affects them mentally forever and i tell you this is the statistic that probably blew my mind the most we'll work with students for a year maybe two years um and then they'll be showing great promise great progress and then they'll go back home the, you know the, the the stat for how many of them continue to stay that way is less than five percent Damn. and it it hurt me to my core because we'll take them out of a situation we'll try and heal them as much as we can and prepare them for what they're about to see. And then they go back into that same exact situation and it just destroys them. And so I could not be more proud um, of all the titles I'm ever going to hold in my life. Being a father and being a husband are just are major. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I want to make sure that my son um, can never say that this was a reason as to why he was the way he would be the way he is. Mm -hmm. um, I want him to have no excuses to be just phenomenal what what do you think other fathers could do to really step up their level of of impact and and being a great father um man i i think about this all the time and i think it comes back to how can i balance my life in a way that i can work on my job and work on my house life and work on the chores and work mm. on my business i did i feel like so there's this guy i was listening to actually um he was he was comparing it to that circus performer that has like the sticks and the plates yep. spinning on top of the sticks. Yep. So he's like, imagine your life like that, mm. where you're trying to balance all these plates and spin all these plates at once. Yep. There is not a single moment where all the plates are spinning just as fast as all the other plates. You know, mm. each plate is slowly like you, you have to constantly be spinning a plate yeah. because one plate's going to be slowing down. Yeah. after the one you just spun you're like oh my gosh i have to spin so many of these and he's like that's life you know like there is no way to be 100 percent balanced mm -hmm. in life you're going to be constantly have to juggle things part of being a good father husband i think is just accepting that mm -hmm. first the first and foremost accept that you can't be the perfect the most ideal father husband man son whatever mm -hmm. um and, and and then second you you need to learn to be present so when you're thinking about work, think about work, you know, <laughs> like, yep. and then when you're home, be home. Yeah. And, and if you can perfect that, you, you are already doing even a better job than me. Um, mm. And I have this in the forefront of my mind all the time. It's like when my son wants to go up and down the stairs 20 times, I sit there and I think I'm like, I prepared for this. Like, this is hard. I don't want to be out here doing the same thing over and over again. <laughs> But, but I do it, you know, because in my head, I'm like, this is being present. Wow. You know, this is what my son needs right now. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then afterwards, I'm super happy about it. You know, like in the moment, it might be a little tough, but it, it's about being present. So it, it's almost like everything that's logical about like making progress and our purpose and, and growing may not necessarily, we might not be fulfilling that like our own personal growth and like moving towards our objectives. But what we are doing is being present, which is 
just by existing, just by being there and not like being off in somewhere in our head and, you know, not like just giving a kid a phone and saying, you go, go play. I'll, I'll yep. hang out right here. You go do your thing. I'll be on my phone. Like just by being there, that is some of the most fulfilling things that we can do, especially at that, that young age is just be there and, and, yep. and let our kids know that, Hey, we're here for you. If you have, ever have any, anything you want to talk about, anything you want to share about, like I'm here and, and like be that space and share, you know, like what's, what we're experiencing and be authentic because it, it works both ways, right? You can't yep. just say, Hey, come to me with all you, anything you want to talk about, but we're like a closed book and we are not actually being, uh, living what we want them to do. It's like, they, they see what we're doing, not yep. what we say. And so like living what we're preaching, I think is, is so important, man. Yeah. And you have to, you have to build this culture. I mean, it's not easy to do what I'm asking to do, right? Like if you, you, you put your kid in front of the TV for a little bit so you can have some free time, like that's fine. I understand. I do that all the time. Um, but if you're sitting on the couch and you turn on the TV for him and you're debating in your head, whether or not you actually have the energy, you probably should turn off the TV. Like if you're actually having that, like that, that thought process of like, ah, uh, you know, he's watched a lot of TV today and yeah. I actually feel okay. I just want to be lazy. Get out of there. You know, like you have to first build that awareness and just, just do it, you know, massive action, just that's go right. for it. You know, that's it's right. That's what you have to, your, your life should be surrounded by that idea. Just, just doing it. You know, yeah. it's so important. There's no one can teach you how to just do it. You just got to do it. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I, I want to dive into the expanding the flame a little bit more. Cause I think that's like a big part of you. Um, what else do you feel people should know? Like, especially as we begin to go into the, the final stretch of this interview, like what can people be doing to expand their flame to really live with that pure positivity, man? Um, kind of maybe going back a little bit to, um, why the flame goes down. Yeah. Um, because the, the, you want your flame to grow, but if there are things that impede it, you need to get rid of those things first. So, uh, we talked a little bit about fear at mm -hmm. the beginning. And I think there's so many reasons why we fear ambition and why we, we put ourselves down. Dean Graziosi, I love this guy, right? He said, uh, everyone's kind of just born with this, uh, me full membership to the self beaters club. We like to beat up ourselves, you know, it's the worst. Um, and I'm like, man, that's so, that's so such a thing I do all the time. I'm like, man, I'm not worthy of this. I don't find value in myself. People are probably thinking horribly of me. Um, and, and it comes down to eliminating the fears, right? And if your fear is that people are thinking bad about you, you're giving people way too much credit, right? Mm. In, in my opinion, yeah. people don't have enough time to think about you all the time. Nope. And people don't have enough time in their own lives. They're all so selfish that they're not thinking about how to judge you. Mm. Um, many times those voices in your head are just you assuming that people are judging you. And that is killer. And you can do something about that now. Mm. You know, that's a limiter that you can remove. Yep. right now, um, which is fantastic. The things you can do that are within your control, you should be doing as quickly as possible. Mm. Um, eliminating fears. If your fear is that you are just not in a financial situation, you're scared that you'll lose everything. Ask yourself, really, what is there to lose? Mm. And, and, and the majority of cases when people are like, I just want to start this business. I'm like, well, then do it, man. Yep. How much does it take to invest in a small business to do podcasting to do like these these are actually very small expenditures and if oh, they yeah. go wrong you're actually okay <laughs> in, the, in the majority of cases you are actually right. going to be fine right. um we just like to overcomplicate things in our heads you know we like to think that things we like to give ourselves excuses and so i mean financially you you are honestly probably going to be fine you know investing 500 bucks into doing something that may or may not work out. Um, and then if you want more help and you want to make sure that that $500 is invested properly, that's why you get a mentor. That's why you yep. get a guide. You know, these people help you with that. Um, so eliminate the fears, find a mentor, um, find a guide. All these things are so important into allowing yourself room for growth in the first place. Mm. Um, and then like we talked about before, it's just finding your drive. And then finding out what you're passionate about. And that's, it can be a daunting task, but it's a fun one. It's yeah. so great. 
And it's, it's um, when you have that mirror outside of you, the guide, the coach, the mentor, who's able to like reflect that back, especially like self-discovery process for people who are not well-versed, who have not built those muscles up of introspection, that, that know thyself wisdom that has been around yes. since like ancient Greek times. It's like so brilliant. And how many of us are actually taught to, to the mechanisms, the behaviors, the habits, sitting with that, the patience, right? The the diligence, the willingness to to look at it with honesty, with with total like an attachment of what it actually is. There's so much to it, but a coach, a guide, a mentor can really help you with being a powerful mirror to just look at yourself and and get that clarity, man. I think that's one of the biggest things is having clarity so you can take better actions, so you feel alignment versus wandering around, spinning around in circles, man. And yep. uh, we are, we're here to ignite that fire, that flame even brighter. And Caleb, I want to tell our audience how they can do that with you, how they can stay connected, man. Tell them what they can do next, brother. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. No, <laughs> this is great. This is my favorite part. I feel like because I, I want to more than anything, get in touch with people who are serious about yeah. their success yep. in their life. I, I, I want people to reach out to me who are like, man, I want that fire. Like I felt some value from what Caleb was saying or what Chris was saying. And then they take, they're taking massive action. I want to speak with those people. I, I want to take time out of my life to respond to those people. So if yeah. you're thinking right now, like you're on the, you're on the edge, like, I don't know, I want to message them. They seem like cool guys. Just do it. I, I personally want to take time out of my life for you. Um, with that being said, um, you can reach at me um, on social media. I'm obviously on Facebook, Instagram, whatever, LinkedIn. Uh, I think my two favorite sources are LinkedIn and Instagram. Yeah. Uh, so Instagram at Caleb I T E. So it's Caleb Byte. My dad used to call me that, and so it stuck with me for the rest <laughs> of my life. Where did that name Byte. come from? Tell us. He, he's so. <laughs> so actually, my dad used to call me Kryptonite, you Ooh. know. Uh, but then it just turned to Caleb Byte, and so that's <laughs> what. And so now I have that for the rest of my life, and I'm like, okay. And I've, unfortunately, it's on all of my emails. It's you have a pass for like passwords in the past it's yeah it. it's become a part of me um and then linkedin just look me up k k a l o b v a l l e it's actually it is valle so you did say that correct in the beginning um <laughs> but i'm used to people calling me vale valley valet i'm just i've heard it all <laughs> so um yes please reach out to me on my social medias dm me that's like the best thing mm. in the world when someone messages you takes the time they're like hey i really appreciated what you had to say i actually also want people to tell me what they didn't appreciate or what feedback they can give me as someone who wants to be a mentor for people. Um, if they have, if you guys are hearing something, you're like, I don't totally agree with that. Let me know. I'm trying to build up my school of knowledge you, forever. I, I, this is something I want to be working on forever. And so I need that feedback as much as possible. I feel, I know Chris is probably the same exact way. Um, so let me know, talk to me. I'm all about that. Boom shakalaka. Caleb Boom Shagalaga. Yep. I love it. <laughs> we, are, we are lit, bro. I, I have loved this time. I've loved your journey hearing about that, getting to know you more, man. And I know my audience got a ton of value, uh, encouragement, inspiration, just knowing like what they can do to take those next steps and like really stay empowered, stay on fire and flan, fan their flame, man. Um, what is, what's your podcast again? Call, oh yeah, our my podcast and the business I have currently is called Success Quest okay. without a space. So just Success Quest. Um, you can find us on any podcast outlets. It's actually doing fantastic right now. Um, we have speakers, people talking to us from around the world. I'm not even joking, actors and multimillionaires, but people who also just have amazing stories. We're not just seeking out the rich and the wealthy. Um, and the goal for that podcast is to help people become more wholly successful. Yeah. That's what we want for people. We're, we're on the quest, brother. I'm so stoked yes. to see how you how you grow and impact people's lives and how you champion this movement moving forward, man. I, I super appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule to share with our audience your journey, your gifts, man. I appreciate no, you. No, thank you. This has been awesome. So I can't wait for the next time we can we can continue to talk. Um, and I, I just hope for you to have the best life ever, man. Thank you, man. Hey, dude, we're doing this together. This is this is just the beginning, bro. Just yeah, the dude. beginning. Oh, we're young, man. We're crazy young. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, brother. Have a great rest of your day, okay? Okay, you too, man.